Pray. I don't know what your prayer life is today. But we ought to be praying more because the Bible says we are living in perilous times. And the truth of the matter is many times you could be in a perilous situation without even knowing it. Oh, you didn't get that. See, many times people don't show their true faces. And you walk into a company and you think that everything is going well. Are you hearing me today? The Bible says Jesus went to the temple early in the morning. And I know Jesus is God, but, but in my humanity, can you imagine that you will be going to the temple to teach people and this is the situation that they will bring to your attention. They want you to assassinate somebody in church. Say so that's why you need to pray because we live in what type of times? Perilous times. The Bible says the devil himself has been transformed into what? An angel of light. The devil will come to you as church members. And don't you know that one of the signs of the time, Jesus talks about it in Matthew chapter 25 and Matthew chapter 24, is that there will come a time that people who are persecuting you and people sometimes we talk about our young people and we cut them down and we think that we are doing them spiritual service. We think it's for their own good that we talk about them behind their back. We assassinate people's character in church. I don't know where Jesus was in the Bible. If he was preaching about love, you know, because Jesus loves to preach about love. And, and, and somebody comes up to him and says, Pastor, we found this one in a compromising situation. And, and the church manual says, come on now. <laughs> Lord, it was from the church manual. Said so Jesus, we found this person and they were breaking the Sabbath and the church man will say Jesus went to the temple and while he is in the temple he doesn't understand or he understood that he was in the midst of a perilous situation. See, when we play politics in church, a lot of times we, we become, we play God in people's lives. Are you hearing me today? I don't think you heard me. We want to use the church manual, we want to use different things in order to stone people. I'm going to go medieval on you now. You know, in the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, if you have a headache, are you hearing me? Anybody suffers from headaches today? Suffers from migraines or headache? Okay, amen. You know what the, 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 the prescription would be for you in the Middle Ages? They would drill a hole in your skull. So that an evil spirit could escape. And if you die, well, that's fine. At least you, not, you don't have an no evil spirit anymore. What am I saying today? A lot of times the church seems to be stuck in the Middle Ages. And we claim to be helping people, but we end up stoning people. Are you hearing me today? I know we have a sin problem. The Bible says all. Understand 
that our duty in life is not to store people. Tell somebody to leave the stones outside. Come on, turn to your neighbors and leave the stones outside. Don't bring them in the church. Don't bring them in the church. Uh, they brought this woman to Jesus. They said, Jesus, we caught her in a compromising situation. You know, Jesus, it's funny, Jesus is different. Jesus is different. Somebody said, Jesus is different. I preached this before, but I'm going to illustrate it again. Tavo, come on. Come on. Leva, come on. Sorry. Leva, come on. I just got mixed up. Leva, come on. Leave the soul outside. Leave the soul outside. George, come on. George, come on. And uh, Pete, come on. And uh, one level, you, you can stay on this side. Uh, and Pete, you're in prison, so you get to stay. You get to sit on the ground right here. No, no, not you, man. Pete. See, many times when we read the Old Testament, we re read modern history into the Old Testament. But God has a different way of doing things. Leva is going to be the judge. Pete is accused. And George is the accuser. So Leva is the? Pete is the? And George is the? What is the function of the judge? What does that mean? To do what? To finalize, to decide, and then what else? And prosecute, sentence, all right? Guess what? You're all wrong. Stone? <laughs> to stone? You're wrong. All right. What's the purpose of the accuser? To complain, to blame, to point out all the sin, everything like that. The actual way the Bible has it is the judge is your advocate, which means the judge is your lawyer. The biblical justice system was in favor of the accused. Thought you were caught that, but you didn't catch it. So let me say it again. The biblical justice system is not like our justice system where the judge just wants to put you in prison. And the faster you can hurry up and, and come a plea, the better for you. In the biblical system, the judge argues with the accuser. Say, get your story straight. This is not the man you're talking about. Could it be this nice, good-looking young man right here? This very, look at how his mother looks at him, tears in her eyes. He's so sweet. Huh? Could not be this young man. You're mistaken. And so the Bible says, in order for you to even start your accusation, you can't have one little old lady who can't see properly at night, peeping through her window and see the accuser do something, and then Run, run. That's not a run, Pete. 
That's a straw. Bible says, even then, if you run to the city of refuge, you're saved. Thank you very much, guys. Step on. Thank you very much. Thank you. The point I'm trying to make here is when we're playing politics, we throw up the part that we don't like. We say, forget about the process. Let's just get the stones. And we forget that Jesus is the judge. And, and Jesus, our judge, is our Because I know you've been taught what your eyes, what they see, the bear the Father up above, and He's looking down to condemn you. God is watching you, just waiting for you to slip up so that He can send you to hell. And the church people came to Jesus with that mess in the temple. You know what Jesus did? Jesus accused the accusers. Jesus accused the accusers. No. You know that Jesus is a powerful man by what the Bible says in verse 8. Look what Jesus, the Bible says in verse 8. Start in verse 6. Because he did it in verse 6. He stood up and then did it again in verse 8. Verse 6 says they tempted him that they might accuse him. But Jesus said what? Now I'm not sure if you've ever been in a mob before. A crowd gathers trying to kill somebody. And they want you to say something. Look how powerful Jesus is. The Bible says Jesus didn't even stand. He stooped down. Everybody is standing over him, waiting for his answer. He stooped down. And when he thought about it a little bit, he stood up. He said, He that is without sin cast the first stone. Then he stood down again. Didn't even look at them. Sometimes you gotta learn how to ignore church people. Come on, don't say amen. <laughs> church people will let you lose your Christianity. So say amen. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm not even worrying about you guys. I'm just writing my little thing right here. He stood down. He didn't look at them. He didn't make eye contact like Caesar the Lord, the dog whispering. He did no talk, no touch, no eye contact. To get the raging mob under control and to help them to see that he was in control. No talk, no touch, no eye contact. He just stood on the ground. A wrong time of wrong. Telling you, the Bible says, the soft answer turneth away what? Wrath. Wrath, but grievous words do what? Stir up anger. Jesus stood 